Hi folks, this is me, Carl Sanders. For $5, you can fill up your car with gasoline. Or you can fill up yourself with my $5 fill up with finger licking good sauce. It's tender, it's juicy, it's delicious. Three chicken tenders, taters, and gravy. I threw in a biscuit and a big old cookie. My $5 fill up will fill you up, guaranteed. And that right, fill up. It's still finger licking good. Good day. Very, very good day for the fellow comrades. Not just uh, the Tennessee fans. Good day to everyone watching on this channel. Did a lot of things today already. Uh, cleaned up my room a bit. Fixed up a lot of things. Uh, cleaned up. You know, I've been... Uh, you know, very bu not so busy as of lately. Kind of took a little mental break after my car wreck on Tuesday. But now I can safely say that I am uh, I'm back. And never plan to leave. Before we get into today's pick I want to tell you guys a little story. And uh, this is something that I, I guess I wanted to talk about for a while on here. And uh, I think I'm going to talk about it now. So, back in May... Uh, before this season, back in May, uh, it was the last day I was working at Top 40 Grill, in case y'all don't know, that's Catfish's Restaurant, Top 40 Grill, Tennessee Vols Restaurant, unfortunately, I don't think, uh, it is in business anymore, uh, so that is truly unfortunate, but, uh, the last day that I was working there, back in May, I, uh, I was getting ready to walk out the door, get my final paycheck and everything, and then as I was walking out, Somebody, uh, somebody stopped me, uh, before I took a look. He said, hey, Squid, uh, because that's how everybody called me there, uh, Squid Tar, not by my actual name. That's the only place that I'll ever work at that that'll call me that. But anyway, um, somebody stopped me, and if you are a Tennessee Vols fan, you most likely know who I, who I am talking about when I say their name. I'm talking about Al Wilson. Al Wilson was there the, the last day that I was working at Top 40, and he stopped me. And a couple of, I'd say a month before this, I actually met with him uh, for the first time ever. Told him about uh, how I wanted to become like a big time YouTuber or a big time like just, uh, the, you know, talking about Tennessee Vols or whatever. And he told me that um, uh, that he uh, at some point watched my stuff and that uh, he was rooting for me and just to pursue my dreams. So to me... As, I mean, he, he told, basically told me to pursue my dreams and, you know, as simple as that was, that really meant a lot to me. So, Al Wilson, if you're watching this, I just wanted to say to you, shout out to you, buddy, and uh, of course, Jamal Lewis, he was there too. So, shout out to both those guys. Um, <laughs> the fact that they even, the fact that he even remembered that is something that is so cool to me and I, I have, I have just so much respect for both those guys so shout out to al wilson and uh, jamal lewis uh i'm gonna keep pursuing this youtube career and i'll do it for y'all now then let's get into uh today's uh well pick em. so i spent a lot of time i i never actually got to do the pick em since i was kind of off up until friday so i never really got in got got to do them but I took a little time to uh, write all the games down and get my record in for this week. So for this week, I did terrible at my pickums. There were a lot of teams that I picked this week uh, that just completely flopped and failed miserably. And in case you don't know, it is completely based on my predictions of the uh, from the off season. So uh, like TCU, they uh, like of course I picked them to do terrible, and they're eight and zero right now. So obviously. But it's almost guaranteed every single week they're going to make uh they're going I'm going to be wrong on TCU. But uh yeah, my record for this week. 19 and 10 out of 29 games. Woo! Yikes. Yeah, that is terrible. Very very terrible as you can tell. Uh probably the worst record I've had up to date. So, yeah, uh a lot of teams completely just flopped, failed miserably. There were some that really kind of shined out, which I wasn't expecting them to, and you wouldn't know about it 
until you actually go back and, and, and look and see for yourself. And unless you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, which is going through all my pickums, and I did all the Power 5 teams, so you have to look at the lower tier Power 5 opponents. You, you want to see uh, some of these scores until you actually do that. So let's go ahead and roll into uh, today. And I'm going to start with the, uh, the, the games from earlier in the week that were on Saturday, starting with Utah and Washington State. I, uh, let's see, if I'm correct, I did pick Utah to win, and they did just that, and they won 21-17, to wasn't the best of performances, I gotta say that, but they, they did pull it out, 21-17, uh, to move up to 6-2, and I'm not really expecting much out of Utah this season, uh, since they already have two losses, what they can do, though, is they may be, may, may be able to grab an upset over, uh, one or the other, uh, big teams in the Pac-12, because I don't think, I mean, they're still in run for conference contention, but any hope of like the playoffs or anything like that is just, they've been gone. But conference contention is still up in the air for uh, Utah. They're still there. They just have to get a little help to do so. And they beat Washington State. So uh, unfortunately, the Wazoo squad uh, fall down to uh, 500 for the season so far. Next up, Virginia Tech and NC State. Man, I really. NC State won. Uh, they're six and two, but they won by a single point against a two and six Virginia Tech. I put way too much stock in NC State this season because I thought they were going to be the ACC champions. I thought they were going to beat Clemson. I thought they were going to be a great team this year, and they're just not. They're they're really. I mean, they're not the worst. They're not garbage. They didn't completely fall off like a Texas A and M or a Miami, but. They're certainly not the world beaters that I thought they were going to be this season. They're just a middle-of-the-road, average ACC team. And it shows in how they play on the field. Uh, now, I did, for granted, they were without their starting quarterback. They were without uh, their main man on the field. So that does play, a, I think that would play a significant part in how this NC State team plays. But, man... To go from that to uh, whatever this is, uh, that's, yeah, that's not good. So, really, the stock in NC State of doing anything really uh, of significance in the postseason, probably gone at this point. I don't think they make a New Year Six with the way that they're playing on the field. I mean, they only have two losses, so they can still have a pretty good season. Just any hopes of doing much of anything outside of that, gone, uh, just in my mind. And then uh, the first game I got wrong here, uh, <laughs> BYU lost to East Carolina 27-24. Um, I deserve an apology because I was right about BYU. Uh, I thought they were going to be a middle-of-the-road uh, average team. I thought they were going to finish the year 6-6, six and six, and they're right on par to do so. In fact, I picked them to beat East Carolina, and they ended up losing. And... In my mind, I don't think they beat Boise State either. They might finish uh, five and seven and short of a bowl. Uh, BYU is just because I, I thought they were going to have. It was because of their brutal schedule that they were going to have a six and six record. And part two that they did, but they're also just they're they're getting worse each week, and it shows in their record four and five. Un, they're under five hundred, and the schedule doesn't get any easier from this point. Now they are past. Uh, they are past Baylor, Oregon, Arkansas. Those are some really rough, uh, tough games. It, but they still got Boise State to play. I think the think the ceiling is six and six to be honest, but, but we'll see. Either way, though, I was pretty much right about BYU. I got a lot of slack for saying they were going to do as bad. Oh come on, man! BYU is going to be a great team this year, and they had potential to be that, but not anymore. You don't lose to East Carolina and uh, just, you know, get a, get away real happy with that. But next up, and now we're on to Saturday's games, and I'll start with just the uh, the highest ranked team and then move down the line, basically where ESPN has it, or how ESPN has it. So Georgia, the Bulldogs, beat up Florida pretty good. I uh, said uh, yesterday that they... Won a very close game and struggled all the way until the end, but that was trolling. That, that's how I usually do with Georgia. I always love to troll them like you guys do to me. Uh, troll, did a little bit of trolling to Georgia yesterday. Some of them went to personal insults. The courtesy of the Georgia fans, I know. 
But anyway, uh, Georgia won pretty handily over Florida, 42-20. Uh, <laughs> kind of blue-balled Florida because uh, Florida thought they were going to come back in it. It was like 28-3, to and then uh, Florida really kind of came back in it, made it 28-20. to Georgia just completely vanished for a full quarter, but they tightened it up at the end of the game and scored a few touchdowns to seal the W and beat Florida. They're 8-0, hold on to that number one ranking, and uh, we'll see how it plays out. I saw a press conference by Kirby Smart, basically just the part where he was talking about Tennessee, and he basically mentioned uh, that Tennessee is a tough opponent. They run a great offense. And they're basically unstoppable on the offensive front. The fact that he mentions that alone proves to me that this will probably be our toughest game yet. I mean, we already knew that going into this, but the fact that the coach is willing to acknowledge that that Tennessee is a very tough opponent, that he's gonna he's gonna have Georgia prepared for this game, and we're gonna have to have a very good game plan set in order to beat them. It's going to be the it's going to be the matchup between the two best teams in college football right now, and that's a, that's a fact. Uh, that is a absolute fact. Now, there are some teams that are in contention with, uh, right behind both those two teams, but the two teams, the two best teams in college football are playing each other next weekend. That is a fact. Um, Georgia and Tennessee right now are the two best teams in college football playing for who is the absolute best. Whoever wins that game will and should be number one in the nation. That's that's an absolute fact right there. So, yeah. Georgia kind of struggled a bit, but they did pull it out. Uh, and Brock Bowers is the best tight end in the country. That is a, that is a fact. Uh, he, he looks so good every single week. Darnell Washington looked great. Uh, Stetson was kind of on and off. Uh, you know, Georgia fans need to stop hating on Stetson Bennett. Uh, he got you to this point as the quarterback for Georgia. He stepped up when nobody else could. And Stetson really didn't even have that bad of a game. Uh, I mean, how many interceptions did he have? Two? There was one interception, which, uh, tch, what can you do about it? That was just, I mean, the Georgia receiver caught it, but then the Florida uh, Florida defender basically nabbed it from him in midair. There was nothing that Georgia could have done about that. That was just an amazing play by uh, the Florida defender right there. But then after that, uh, you had... I mean, he had one boneheaded uh, pick, which was, I mean, yeah, it was stupid. And, I mean, well, what else can you do about it? Stetson Bennett may not be the best quarterback in the SEC, but he's certainly not the worst. So, Georgia fans need to be glad with what they've got. Uh, but we'll see how that plays out when they play Tennessee and see who, which offense can really match up in that one. Now, of course, my previous comment about Tennessee and Georgia uh, being the two best teams, I know it had to make some fan base a little, a little, a uh, little nettled. That being Ohio State, who played Penn State, and granted, uh, they did uh, get me wrong on this one because I thought Penn State was going to get the W at home. Uh, Ohio State won forty-four to thirty-one against Penn State. Now. Granted, I think if this game were at night, like I thought it was going to be at the end, at the start of this season, um, this game probably would have been closer because the wideout in at night is basically unbeaten uh, for a lot of teams. But Ohio State pulled it out, got the W. But man, they looked uh, pretty pretty sussy on defense. The offense and C.J. Stroud just about as great as I thought it would be. They, they look great on offense. What else can I say? The defense, though, was just very, very concerning. And Penn State nearly, nearly uh, got them, but Ohio State managed to pull away and get the W. And, well, how, how many did they win by 13? So, I mean, winning on the road against Penn State is no easy feat, so shout out to them on that regard. But this is, this is kind of just what happens when Ohio State plays any team with a pulse is what I exactly thought was going to happen, which was Ohio State was going to struggle, and that is what we saw. Ohio State has had the easiest schedule all the way up until this point, and that wouldn't bother me had Ohio State fans not come to us and tell us about how easy our schedule has been, and we only have two quality wins, that being Alabama and whatever. And the, 
I mean, as compared to the Alabama win by Tennessee, this is a this is not really a quality win by Ohio State. You beat a top fifteen Penn State team, which is still pretty good, but they're going to fall in the rankings, and now they're going to be a top twenty Penn State team. And if we're going to, and if you're going to sit there and say that Tennessee doesn't have five ranked wins, which which they do, because Pitt, Florida, and uh, LSU were all ranked at the time, no matter how mad that makes you. Uh, that, that's the truth. They were all ranked at the time, so uh, cry about it in the comment section. But regardless, if that's the case, then yeah, you beat a top 20 Penn State team. And if they're unranked the next week, then that's what they are. You beat an unranked Penn State team. You got to be consistent, Ohio State fans, if you want me to believe uh, that you got a big win. Which, this is a pretty big win, but you've had an easy schedule up until this point. I would say uh, we'll have to see how you do against Michigan, but Michigan didn't look good uh, yesterday either, which I'll get into that in just a moment. But first, we got to talk about the number three team. You doing all right? Y'all doing all right, Kentucky fans? Oh, the Wildcats talked and talked and talked and talked and talked the talk all week. And... How many did they lose by? 38. <laughs> Whew, they, they love to talk about that pass defense and how terrible it was. And how many whew, how many passing yards did Will Levis have? Like 98? Not good. Not good at all for Kentucky. Uh, that was a horrible performance on their end. And about the trash can, by the way, I did get a comment talking about how, uh, like, I guess unsportsmanlike the trash can thing was for Kentucky. I do that for every team we beat. It's not just Kentucky. I did it for Ball State Week One. I did it for Bama. I did it for LSU, Florida. I did it for everybody. Uh, so the only team I didn't do it for was UT Martin because what? Why even? Why even bother? But um, yeah. Okay, so. The, the the thing about yesterday was Kentucky was, I mean, it, it was about what you would expect, but on a more dominant level. Because Kentucky came into this game, I thought they had a pretty good uh, offense running. Will Levis, I, I mean, for for a lot of the time period, especially at the start of the game, uh, Levis and Chris Rodriguez kind of just, you know, killed Tennessee's defense with the run. Uh, we couldn't figure out how to stop Will Levis for a majority of of the uh, the first quarter in the first half, but uh, once the defense tightened up, especially our pass defense, it was game set and match. Uh, Tennessee just completely wiped the floor with Kentucky, and it wasn't that Kentucky just had a terrible game plan. It wasn't that they just had a horrific performance, which they kind of did. But that was a lot in part to the, them just being completely and utterly outmatched. Tennessee had them by the by uh, the offense. And the defense performed exponentially better uh, yesterday. The uh, the defensive line, the defensive front, our, our uh, linemen are just completely. I mean, they're great. They're great. They're and and that's all you need if you're a Tennessee defense. Because when you've got an offense at the level that we have, all you need is a great defensive line and an average defensive backfield, which is what we had. And they performed pretty good. Yesterday had three interceptions on Will Levis, which that is great. Uh, that being said, doing what we did, uh, Will Levis was not able to throw the ball deep. Whenever he did, it would either be batted away or picked off. Our, we had great coverage downfield. We had a, a couple of issues covering slant routes, but we got that covered up too. And Levis was pressured the entire night. His O-line was doing absolutely nothing to help him on that regard. And that's in part to how great our D-line played yesterday. So, yeah, defense had a great performance. You'd imagine that holding Kentucky to six points. And, you know, Kentucky's defense, again, the best defense who played all year up until this point. They averaged 28 points for... Uh, they averaged uh, allowing 28 points going into this game, and Tennessee put up nearly twice that. So, yeah. I don't really know how, but Jalen Hyatt... Uh, always, he's always getting open uh, week by week. He's just playing just an exponentially phenomenal game each and every week. He broke the school record 
for the amount of touchdowns scored in a uh, single game. Or in not, well, he did that against Alabama, I believe. But he's broke the school record for amount of reception touchdowns in a season. And we've still got four more games to play in just the regular season alone. So, yeah, exponentially great performance by Jalen Hyatt, as you would expect. Even Hendon Hooker, great performance, uh, looked dominant as per usual. Uh, and he's the favorite for the Heisman Trophy this year. Hendon Hooker could very well be the very first Heisman player at Tennessee. Should have been Peyton Manning, but uh, still. Hendon Hooker, he very well could be that guy. He's he's just looking better and better each and every week, and I, I love what I'm seeing from this offense. love the defensive performance, and this is exa- exactly what we need again, going up against Georgia. People love to make fun of our performances against Pittsburgh and Florida and yeah, that it wasn't the good best performance, but Tennessee has been getting better each and every week, and the consistency on that regard is what I love. Because I was worried about Tennessee going into this game with a hangover and a kind of looking ahead uh, against Georgia, but no, they they came in, took care of business, and now they are prepared to face off against UGA, and that's what makes me happier than anything you can imagine. So, yeah. Shout out to Tennessee. We're playing. We played a complete week. On to the next one. Oh, and by the way, I did see the AP poll. We're tied with Ohio State for two. How do you get tied with Ohio State at two? What is this, uh, you know, tying uh, rankings thing? I, 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 what, what sense does that make? We're either two or we're not. Rank us number two or rank us number three. Don't tie us with Ohio State. That makes absolutely no sense. None at all. Either tie us, or I mean, either rank us number two or rank us number three. You can't make rank us in the middle, in between number two and number three. That makes no sense. Huh. Sheesh. And now about Michigan. Uh, Michigan played Michigan State yesterday, won 29 to 7. Kind of really struggled for the majority of that game, but pulled away. And they finally got that monkey off their chest. The monkey off their back, I believe, is the phrase I'm looking for. But. Michigan State uh, at the near towards the uh, end of that game, they had they were forced to punt and uh, well they fumbled the snap and Michigan recovered and it ended up being a Michigan touchdown. They finally got that monkey off their back from a couple of years ago. Oh, he has trouble with the snap and the ball is free. And they had the same commentator for it too. So shout out to Michigan for finally breaking that one. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, Michigan, they, they won another game. They're still uh, right where they're supposed to be at number four. Uh, th- there was a big fight at the end, or basically a big uh, group battle, where uh, the Michigan State players just kind of jumped on one uh, Michigan player. And I think all of them should be ejected. Uh, kind of like how Jermaine Burton should have been ejected. But, of course, uh, leave it to the Alabama fans to cry about that one. Well, you threw mustard on the field. Oh, <laughs> All Alabama fans have been doing ever since they lost is crying, and I'm all here for it. <laughs> they cannot take a loss at face value, and they never will. Next up, West Virginia against TCU. I picked West Virginia to win this one at the start of the season. Well, they didn't, as you would as you would expect. TCU really did struggle, as I would expect, but they did win 41-31, to and they get by uh, another week of struggling against mid-tier opponents. How much longer can they get away with this? That's really the big question. Uh, I don't know. Will they be able to go undefeated? We'll have to see. TCU's at the point now where, in my mind, unless uh, something happens to one of the big big six, because they're number seven and still undefeated, but, I mean, they're undefeated but still at number seven. They got to hope that one of the big uh, six lose if they end up losing a, uh, a game because they have to go undefeated, in my mind, in order for them to make the playoffs. It's a lot like the Clemson uh, scenario because Clemson, Clemson really needs uh, somebody to – because Clemson's uh, resume is just complete garbage, and they took a big hit this week because uh, Syracuse and uh, Wake Forest took quite the beatdowns, which I'll get into momentarily. But as for uh, as for TCU, yeah, they just need uh, they just need to win out from here. Can they do it? I don't know. They keep squeaking by opponents, but as long as they continue to do so, they they will have the privilege of getting blown out in the playoffs.
All right, on to the next one. Well, uh, psh, let's see. Oregon versus Cal uh, is the next one. So, Oregon's number eight. They beat Cal 42-24. Got that one right. Uh, psh, well, what can I say about Oregon? They've won out ever since the Georgia game. It's a lot like Tennessee to where they've improved each and every week, but not to the extent that Tennessee has. And in my mind, if they enter the playoffs again, whichever way they do it, they'll just get blown out by whoever they play. Oregon, I think, Oregon has had a remarkable turnaround after what happened against Georgia. Bo Nix actually looks pretty good, but all of that for the privilege of playing Georgia again. Imagine that, okay? What's rec What's Bo Nix's record against Georgia right now? I I don't even know, but each and every each and every time I've seen him play Georgia, it's just the same thing. Him getting dominated, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't even fathom the thought of having to go to the playoffs for the ability to lose to Georgia again. But if you're Bo Nix, that's exactly what may just happen to you. So, in my mind, if I were Bo Nix, I would dodge the playoffs. But hey, uh, still a remarkable turnaround for Oregon, uh, seven straight uh, wins. Uh, including one over un previously undefeated UCLA. Their defense, really sussy here, but that's in part to Cal getting some garbage points up on the board. So, uh, still, uh, Oregon undefeated ever since week one. Can they continue to do so? I don't know. But as far as I can tell, Oregon uh, right now is the front runner for the Pac-12, as you would expect. Next up, let's see. Oklahoma State against Kansas. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Who expected this one? Who saw this one coming? Uh, nobody. That's the answer. Some people probably thought that Kansas State was going to get the upset over Oklahoma State, who's a top 10 team, or was a top 10 team uh, before this one. I got this one wrong, by the way. I thought Oklahoma State was going to win, and they did it the, the, uh, the complete opposite. Not only did Oklahoma State lose to Kansas State on the road, they just flat out didn't show up. They... The, the bus didn't the bus was gone uh they drove right past Kansas State and sat in sat in some type of alleyway they, they were just sitting there waiting for everything to waiting for everything to come to a close not a single point scored Oregon State might, could have just not shown up at all and they would have scored the same amount of points as they did against Kansas State uh yesterday um that was horrible that was a horrific showing and the worst part about it is Kansas State was without Adrian Martinez in this game. This is with their backup quarterback. So either they have one of the best backup quarterbacks in the nation, uh, or uh, uh, Oklahoma State might be in some real uh, significant trouble uh, for the uh, remainder of the season. Because that's some, that's not just like you took a bad loss. That's some fraudulent level L's you took last night. So... Yeah, in my mind, Oklahoma State should not be in the top twenty-five anymore after that after that loss because that was just that was just brutal, uh, whichever way you look at it. But they, I mean, I think they still are in the top twenty-five. But yeah, that was horrible. That was a horrible performance. That's something. That's something reminiscent of Oklahoma versus Texas. But uh, I guess uh, the more things change, the more things stay the same, huh? Hey, Oklahoma State has a little bit of Oklahoma in them by name and, uh, of course, by performance. Anyway, next up, Wake Forest versus Louisville. Same thing here. What in the world happened to Wake Forest? They were a top 10 team and got absolutely drug across the field by Louisville. It wasn't even a close game. Louisville just outright just <laughs> murdered them and just... Uh, executed them on live television. This was a just absolute just destruction. Uh, Louisville won forty eight to twenty one, and uh, well, Wake Forest now is six and two after that loss. Uh, and kind of like how Oklahoma State is, I, I don't think Wake Forest should be even ranked after that L that they took because that is just a that's a demoralizing L uh, to lose to Louisville like that. And this is bad for Kentucky, too, because after what happened to them against Tennessee, now there's some sec uh, now there's some second guessing about whether or not they will be able to beat Louisville. But I don't know. We'll just have to see, won't we? But anyway, yeah, Wake Forest, that is a just demoralizing L to take. 
Uh, can they rebound off of this? I don't know. But yeah, like I said earlier, this is bad for Clemson because they needed Wake Forest to win out, and uh, well, they did. They did do that, and not only that, they lost really, really bad to a what I think is an average Louisville team. So, yeah. Wake Forest was about the best team that Clemson has beat all year. And with that loss that they, uh, Wake Forest just took, who who's the best now? I don't. Is it Notre Dame? <laughs> they haven't even played Notre Dame yet. They play Notre Dame, I think, this, or, this week or next week. Either way, though, uh, Clemson probably has to. They're, they're in a lot of the same situations as TCU. I think they have to win out in order to make the playoffs. That resume is just garbage. So yeah, we'll see how it plays out though. Uh, they're gonna need some. They're gonna need some favors in order to make the playoffs if they lose a game. If they win out, I still think that I think they make the playoffs without issue. But um, we'll see. Clemson is Clemson has the resume to win out. Uh, we'll see if they have the ability to do so. Next up, USC against Arizona. Uh, Narrowly avoiding disaster, USC is seven and one now. Got this one right, uh, thankfully. Uh, but forty-five to thirty-seven, USC pulled out the W. Uh, are they gonna Are they gonna ever recover after that loss to Utah? I don't know. I really don't know. The Pac-12 is just in shambles right now. I don't I don't know if there's any hope for any team making the playoffs. I really don't. But in my mind, yeah, USC. Kind of, kind of concerning that they only beat Arizona by one score. They're a bit of an on-off team, and that I mean Arizona is better, granted, than what I thought they were going to be this season. But they're still three and five, so I don't know. I got, I got some things to work out uh, for uh, USC in my mind, and the same goes for this next team here, UCLA, uh, number 12 UCLA, they're 7-1 now after beating Stanford, 38-13, to got this one right, um, but they actually beat him convincingly, 38-13, to I stayed up surprisingly to watch this one along with the other three people that were watching it in the stadium, uh, I was listening to the crowd, it sounded like something you'd hear during the COVID year, uh, and that's not good, that's not good if you're UCLA, your fan base uh, is just... Where is UCLA's fan base? Is there a single fan on YouTube of the UCLA Bruins? I really hope so. I would love uh, to hear his thoughts on just the just the very, very low crowd showing for these UCLA games. But either way, they're 7-1, and 138-13 over Stanford, like I previously mentioned. And in my mind, UCLA probably still is the best team in the Pac-12, but uh, I don't think they're the front runners now after losing to Oregon, because uh, Oregon has zero Pac-12 losses, so yeah. <sighs> we'll see how it plays out, won't we? A lot of questioning on that regard. Next up, I did get this one wrong, uh, Texas A&M lost to number 15 Ole Miss. Ole Miss was a very weird team to predict, and their schedule, when I look back on it, uh, I, I had them winning out the first seven games, so I was perfect, and I was actually perfect after the LSU game, because I thought that was going to be their first loss, and that's exactly what happened. This is the first game I got uh, wrong with Ole Miss. They are, uh, let's see, 8-1 and one now, and that's a, I mean, that's a pretty big win. 31 to 28 over Texas A&M narrowly avoided disaster. Clutched up on defense uh, on uh, that fourth down tr attempt that Texas A&M had, but Jimbo Fisher and fourth downs do not make a good com uh, good combination. And speaking of Jimbo Fisher, what a what an abject disaster he's been at Texas A&M. Three and five. Texas A&M right now is the perfect, absolute textbook example of the phrase, you can't pay to win in college football. And that's exactly what he tried to do with all these NIL deals and the millions upon millions he spent to get these Texas A&M players and big-name five-star uh, recruits. And as you would expect, now that they see how terrible Texas A&M is playing on the field, most of them are jumping ship and moving onward away from uh, A&M. And, you know... The seat for Jimbo Fisher is getting hotter and hotter as the day passes. And before you know it, 
he'll be sitting right there with uh, Harson. Now, I don't think it's as bad as where Brian Harson is now, but I believe they both shared the same record. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty bad. Sorry, I had a little itch in my eye. But, uh, yeah, there's some deep, deep concern with uh, A&M right now. There really is. Uh, yeah. And they'll never clutch out a game to save their lives. We saw the same type of thing against Alabama. Whenever Texas A&M is in a situation where they're down by any type of number, no matter if it's 1, 2, 10, 15, no matter how many points they're down by, you cannot count on Texas A&M to make a comeback to save their lives. You can count more on them choking a lead than you can uh, saving themselves from a deficit. And that just goes to show how bad things are looking right now for A&M. And they can't get rid of Jimbo. Uh, Harson with Auburn, maybe there's uh, an excuse you can make up to get rid of Harson. But with Jimbo, no matter what excuse you come up with, if you fire him, 90 freaking million you spent with this clown. 90 million. That's, they're in, they're in no saving you from that. You're stuck with mediocrity for a while, so... Uh, I can't say anything other than, uh, well, that's what you get for, uh, you know, spending all this money trying to, trying to win games. Uh, you can't pay to win, even if you're Alabama, uh, spending money to try and get refs. You can't win games by paying. So, yeah, take from that what you will, A&M, but, man, you're, you're in quite the, uh, Quite the, what what word am I looking for? It is a uh, rambunctious uh, event going on at Texas A and M. There you go. That's what I. That's all I can say about that. Next up, and this is the same thing with Wake Forest here. I did get this one right actually, but Notre Dame uh, pulled out the uh, the big W against Syracuse, or Syracuse kind of just crapped the bed against Notre Dame, basically. 31-24 to was the final score. And the worst part about it is it's not like this Notre Dame team is like they usually are to where they're very good and they're undefeated heading into this game. No. This Notre Dame team the week before lost to a uh, one in, what was it, like a one in five Stanford team? Yeah. Uh, that's terrible for Clemson because now that their best win just lost to a Five and three Notre Dame, or what was previously a four and three Notre Dame, it's not it's not looking good for uh, Clemson's resume. Uh, that's all I can really say. Uh, as for Syracuse, still a remarkable season for the Orange Men. Uh, I really did not expect things to play out this way for Syracuse. They've definitely because I thought they were going to finish last in the ACC, but they've done the absolute opposite. Up until that Clemson game, they were the only other remaining undefeated ACC team. So that's a pretty good accomplishment for Dino Babers. But now things are starting to kind of wear down for Syracuse. That's their second loss of the season. They're bowl eligible, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if they can do much more than uh, six wins, which I think they can. I think they can win out, but they better start winning soon. That's all I can say. Illinois, uh, the next game up here. I got this one wrong, as you would expect, because I put up too much stock in Nebraska. And now they lost another game. And they have the same record as Texas A&M right now. Let that one sink in. Uh, but anyway, they lost to Illinois 26-9. to uh, Illinois 7-1 right now, looking really, really good. Uh, Burt Bielema, no matter, uh, no matter how you want to run from it, dread from it, run from it, Burt Bielema still arrives. And Illinois in, Illinois in the Big Ten Championship game is looking more and more accomplishable by the week. And that win could have very well just solidified it. But we got to see what happens with Minnesota and Purdue before we come to uh, conclusions. Wisconsin, too. Don't forget about them. But anyway, yeah, that's a big win for Illinois. Cincinnati finally took another L against UCF, 25-21. to How about Gus Malzahn getting that win? That's a big, accomplishable feat. But anyway, Cincinnati probably out of the top 25 as uh, for this week, as you would expect. I haven't checked the AP poll other than seeing Ohio State and Tennessee are tied at two, which, again, still the dumbest thing I've ever seen. But I digress. Anyway, next up, 
Uh, North Carolina over Pittsburgh, uh, 42-21. And, oh, boy, the, the trolls are really feeding in on this one because uh, North Carolina didn't need overtime to beat Pittsburgh. They didn't need overtime to beat Pittsburgh. Uh, North Carolina better than Tennessee confirmed. Well, apparently, and this is something that a lot of people don't get, teams get better by the week. Uh, but, 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 but don't tell Georgia fans that, uh, they're still trying to explain how Missouri is the greatest team ever, but, uh, and Kent State, but anyway, North Carolina, big win for them. Uh, they're seven and one right now. And I don't think, uh, Drake may, or Drake may, I believe is his name or yeah. Yeah. But I don't think he's getting enough credit. Uh, the job that they're doing right now, I mean, they only have one loss, uh, for the entire season. Now, they did kind of get off to a rough start, and their defense is still very, very sussy. But they did uh, get the W, and they, they're sitting really good right now. Uh, so, in my mind, North Carolina probably is the front runner for uh, the ACC Coastal. Now, whether or not they get on with the ACC Championship uh, to win that one, I don't see that happening. I've said it all season. Whoever wins the ACC Coastal has the privilege of losing to Clemson no matter what happens. Uh, so we'll see how that we'll see how that plays out once we get to it. But anyway, next up, how about this one? This one kind of really threw me off. I did get this one wrong as you would expect. South Carolina, what in the world happened? Y'all lost to uh <laughs> y'all lost to Missouri 23-10. Uh-oh. What what's ha what happened? What happened? Th that's bad. I mean, that that's a bad loss to take at home. I don't get it. What is South Carolina's identity this year? They beat Kentucky uh, pretty handily and then go on to lose to Mizzou. What are they this year? I don't understand. People thought, I mean, before this, their only two losses were the Arkansas and Georgia games. So people thought that uh, South Carolina had potential to be a, uh, a genuine pretty good team this year. And for a lot of the time, I was actually concerned. I thought that South Carolina could give us a little bit of trouble when we go to play them in uh, South Carolina and, and uh, Columbia. But no, no, that kind of just solidified the deal. Columbia is not a scary place. If Mizzou can go on the road and beat South Carolina by 13, you best guarantee that Tennessee can win tw uh, thrice that amount. So, yeah, uh, <sighs> this kind of just solidified the idea for me that uh, the schedule after this upcoming game against UGA – it is just a complete and utter joke. Uh, Mizzou, South Carolina, and Vandy. Uh, <laughs> basically, just three free wins. You might as well just throw us into uh, Atlanta if we wound up beating Georgia. But uh, anyway, I digress. Next up, Arkansas against Auburn. They beat them 41-27. to And this is good for Arkansas because they desperately needed a win. They kind of just fell off the map. After starting out, uh, what was it, 4-0, 5-0? Uh, they were doing really good up until uh, their game against Alabama. And then everything just kind of slowly but surely fell apart. And now they've finally gotten themselves back together. And we'll see how it plays out. Uh, but yeah, anyway, as for Auburn, it, it's it's any day now Brian Harson uh, is out of a job. I, I really, I'm just waiting for the announcement now. It's... It, I'm, I'm just waiting for uh, Brett McMurphy or somebody else to tweet out about, uh, you know, <laughs> Brian Harson being uh, fired from Auburn. It, it's it literally, it, it can happen any moment. You never know. You could be out walking your dog or you could be uh, driving around somewhere, going to, going to Walmart to get groceries. You just never know. But the announcement is bound to come out any moment. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Auburn's prone to keeping coaches for longer than you would expect, so I don't know. I don't know. Oklahoma, let's see what they do. They're five and three right now. Beat up a three and five Iowa State team, twenty seven thirteen. Got this one right as you would expect. Uh, uh, nothing much else to say about that. Still sitting uh, at five and three though. I don't think they'll get into the rankings. I didn't even. I, like I said, I didn't even check the rankings, but I don't think I, Oklahoma is ranked, and they don't deserve to be, uh, at least not yet. 
Got a little more to uh, got a little more to do before you uh, get back into the rankings, at least in my mind. And this is one of those games. I got this one wrong, by the way. Boston College lost to UConn, thirteen to three. And you wouldn't know that unless you actually watch Boston College. Uh, there are probably more people that attend UCLA games than uh, the people that watch uh, Boston College football. But uh, yeah, they lost to UConn. 13-3. to three. Uh, They're 2-6 right now. Boston College is just a, a really, really bad team. They might as well have just taken the throne from Syracuse as the worst ACC team. Uh, and that really tells you how bad things have gotten for them. Uh, maybe Vandy would beat this team, this Boston College team. I don't know, but they, they, don't, they don't play this season. And it, that's really a shame. I bet Vandy wishes Boston College were somehow in the ACC for one week. So that way they could have an SEC win. Uh, wouldn't that be something, wouldn't it? By the way, Vandy hasn't won an SEC game since uh, 2019, so let that one sink in. Anyway, uh, Georgia Tech against Florida State. Florida State uh, lost. Florida State lost. No, that's not right. Georgia Tech lost 41 uh, to 16 against Florida State. Uh, FSU. We're seeing a lot of five and three teams and three and five teams uh, after this week. But, uh, yeah, anyway, Florida State gets a big win. Uh, they're a pretty good team this year. Uh, all things considered, FSU may not be uh, in contention to win, like, any championships, but they're definitely better this year than previous years before. In my mind, Florida State is in prime position to at least make a bowl of anything. Uh, so that's a pretty good accomplishment for Florida State especially if they wound up going to something better than 6-6 six and six, like I predicted them to go. But yeah, anyway, got that one right. And I don't even know why I'm... I, I, I hate the fact that I'm forced to follow this team. Uh, Houston, however, did win against South Florida, 42-27. So yes, I did get that one right. The only game I predicted Houston to lose was against SMU, SMU. So I don't know. Have they played yet? We'll see. Uh, next up... How about this one? Miami and Virginia. Miami actually pulled it out in four overtimes. Can you believe it? After having eight turnovers last week, uh, they actually managed to pull out a W against a probably terrible Virginia team. 14-12, the final score in four overtimes. So that just means nobody wanted to score at all. I believe... uh, this is like this was like the uh, Virginia Tech game from earlier, uh, where Miami just didn't feel like uh, scoring at all, and it was like zero to zero at, at like halftime. It was like six to nine, something like that. It was stupid. It, nobody was nobody was there to watch it, and you wouldn't know unless you're uh, you just love to make fun of Miami, or, or you're a Miami fan, in which case uh, I feel sorry for you, uh, for real. Uh, anyway. Next up, uh, Minnesota over Rutgers, 31-0. Got that one right, too. And every other game after this, I did get right, so that makes me happy, at least. But anyway, Minnesota, big win over Rutgers, uh, 31, bl- just pretty much blanked them, shut them out, because they got no points up on the board. <sighs> Remember when Greg Schiano, and this is something I love to see, uh, Greg Schiano, uh, he, he would have been a great candidate. He would have been a great candidate for Tennessee squid tart. <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. Josh Heupel is putting up 40, 50 points each and every week. And as for, uh, well, Rutgers, they put up zero on Minnesota. However, I will agree with you. He probably would have been a better candidate than uh, Jeremy Pruitt. But it probably would have ended the same way uh, as compared to how Jeremy Pruitt ended up. Next up, Iowa. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what? No way. What? (gasps) <gasps> Iowa scored 33 points. That's insane. I can't believe it. But anyway, yeah, Iowa put up uh, 33 points on Northwestern. Uh, 33-13. Now, Northwestern is probably on par to be the worst, if not one of the worst teams in all of college football right now. And their their only win is uh, in week zero against Nebraska. And that's really saying something about Nebraska. But anyway, uh, yeah, they're on a seven-game winning streak now. And as for Iowa, they actually have a pulse on offense, at least for now. We'll see how that plays out down the line. And uh, 
Kirk Ferentz needed it because if they had lost this game, I couldn't imagine it would have been there for much longer. Next up, Arizona State, uh, without a coach, by the way, uh, beat Colorado 42-34. to Colorado now 1-7 as well. Uh, don't forget that Colorado does have a win. Who is the worst team in the Power 5 this year between like Northwestern, Colorado, Vandy, uh, Boston College? Those are probably the four worst teams. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'll make a playoff out of that. Anyway, uh, next up, Baylor and and uh, Texas Tech. The final game on here, at least that I uh, covered. Baylor dominated forty five to seventeen. Uh, they handed him. They handed him a pretty ginormous L, and that's a pretty big one because Texas Tech is not a. I mean, they're probably, they're probably the best four and four team right now. So. Yeah, pretty big W for uh for Baylor. I think the Bears should be back in the top 25 this week. If not, they should be uh, down the line if they end up winning more games. Uh, again, I don't have their schedule pulled up, pulled, pulled up, so I don't know exactly who they play uh, this week. But I do know for a fact that if they win another game and, and they're 6-3, and three, that they should be pretty close, if not inside of the top 25. And there you go. That is uh that's the top twenty or the uh that's the week nine record for this week. Uh nineteen and ten. Out of three hundred and forty nine games, that makes my total record two hundred and sixty and eighty nine. So I already have eighty nine games wrong uh throughout this season. So if I was hoping to get under the uh one hundred games wrong threshold, I can safely say that that is just probably impossible. Uh, I'd have to get basically every game right uh, from this point onward. And considering the fact that teams like TCU, Arizona, uh, and some other teams have really done uh, quite a bit better than what I thought they were going to do, chances are that that is just absolutely not going to happen. And not only that, but I picked Tennessee to lose to South Carolina. People seem to forget that at the start of the season. The, ten the team that I thought was going to beat Tennessee was South Carolina. And considering the fact that Tennessee is not having one of those Years where they just kind of are on, off, on, off. They're being very consistent. Not looking too good for uh, the Gamecocks. But anyway, that'll wrap it up for me. You know, it really is uh, It really is nice for a lot of reasons to be a Tennessee Vol right now. Obviously, this is the biggest amount of success that I've seen on this channel. And not just for me, that goes for like BBD as well. And he's been on here for how long exactly? 12 almost 15 years he's been a, he's been on youtube covering tennessee football for about as long as tennessee has been in the dumpster uh in terms of just how they performed on the field he's seen all the things all the way from fulmer getting fired all the way up until well us finally beating alabama so yeah he's been through the ups the downs the lefts the rights Every which way, and I support BBD all the way uh, for uh, that. Hoping maybe sometime this year, hope to do a live stream with him in person. That would be funny. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, uh, anyway, it feels great to be a Tennessee Vol right now because we're undefeated, we're 8-0, and and honestly, uh, I, can, I can safely say that that is just something I was not expecting this year. Uh, my, my, my doubts were breaking in towards the end of that Pittsburgh game when we went into overtime. Obviously, I thought that was a great win, but I just didn't see really much of any way that we were going to win out from this point onwards, especially beating like uh, LSU and Alabama. But we did that, and we're getting better each and every week, and it shows on the field, and that's all that matters to me. Even if we wound up, obviously, I hope we don't lose to Georgia. I have a squid tard and the Georgia fans have a very, uh, it's, it's a pretty long rivalry. I have a pretty big history with Georgia fans, as we all know. Uh, Georgia fans have been giving me hell all the way up until I, when, I, when I started doing YouTube. When I, when I outed myself as a Tennessee fan, as soon as I started YouTube back in 2016, it's been nothing but torture as soon as Georgia uh, even came. After 41 to nothing, it's just been nothing but annoyance and anger from Georgia fans. So this is the biggest game that I've gotten to experience coming up. Uh, obviously, since my face has already been revealed, can't really use that 
as a, uh, oh, if uh, Tennessee beats Georgia, I'll reveal my face. No, it's already been revealed, but uh, that'd be dumb. But yeah, anyway, it's obviously uh, a big game coming up. And I love to troll Georgia. And obviously, if you are a Georgia fan watching this, which you probably are, you're, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing more than Georgia fans love than to listen to me talk about Georgia. But anyway, if you are a uh, UGA fan watching this right now, you have to admit Tennessee is at least one of the top three, if not the top uh, in two and one. You can probably mangle those together. Georgia and Tennessee are the two best teams in college football, and those two teams are playing each other this Saturday. Both the East and the West get decided this week. I don't know if you all knew that, but if LSU beats Alabama, they're go they're probably heading to Atlanta unless they fall over a fall off a cliff. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But as for Tennessee, Georgia, it's the game between the two best teams in college football, and I and I I'm not I mean I, I'm a homer. Yes, I will admit that I'm a Tennessee homer. But I'm not that much of a homer to say that Georgia ain't no good. Georgia's good. And Georgia fans should admit that Tennessee is good too. We have the most dominant offense in college football and a defense that's slowly getting better each and every week. It is going to be a hard-fought game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout on either side. And I'm super excited and super stoked to talk about it. I'm probably going to end up splitting the uh, preview videos into two different parts. One, where I actually cover the game. And then two where I give my long-awaited trash talk video about UGA. Man, am I excited to do that. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. Thank you guys so much for watching another one of these pickums. I'm not going to miss it this week uh, for week 10. So sooner or later, I will have that video released, probably on Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. I may have a video, maybe I have a short video, talking about my predictions thus far uh, coming in, uh, hopefully earlier this week. But until then... I shall see you guys in the next video. As always, go Vols and power to Tardaria. And power to Tennessee as well. The power T, the power Tardaria, and the power Tennessee. Beepity.